background is familiar with the procedures. There is a few items on the agenda for today. Uh, first is document status, uh, document status and update. Uh, and then we, uh, um, Emil asked that we talk about uh, the map like data proposal on which Carsten will give an update. And there is this new um, proposal around that came out of the file magic discussion that we could have allocations for content format and also custom will show us a bit there. Um, on the top, any things that you want to put on the agenda on short notice? Yeah, I just was wondering whether we should briefly talk about the status of file magic and network addresses. Um, yep, we, um, yeah, let's do that. Um, um, so it's in the agenda already, thank you. Um, so let's go ahead then with uh, text OID. Text OID is now with the RSC editor. So there is um, basic, basically things will run from will be driven from from them from there on. Um, and I don't yeah, but I haven't heard back from RFC editor, but at least the the allocations are already through with Diana, so things are progressing. On CDDL control. Um, you probably noticed that I sent out a working group last call, even though we didn't really get any recent reviews. Um, this is based on the observation that some people only start, uh, some people seriously start reviewing documents uh, when a working group last call uh, starts. Um, but this also means that we'll need reviews. So um, if every everyone, especially who is not an author or not a document shepherd, because I will be doing a shepherd review anyway later on. Um, please look at this document, um, please review it because this will be the base for the later Shepard write-up. Um, Carsten, you mentioned that there is the ASDF uh, meeting later on. So if you could, con if, if we don't find people around here, it might be a possibility that we can get um, some feedback from down, downstream or from downstream too, given that ASDF um, is depending on this. So shall we briefly talk about my mini review? Um, it would be helpful. I gotta admit, I haven't processed it yet, but um, please go ahead. Yeah. So um, I um, I now need to remember what I wrote. Um, uh, I thought it might be useful to since since uh, I have been using the, the stuff in the document for for a year now. Um, in various contexts, um, if I uh, briefly make uh, uh, my my observations uh, known, and uh, there is a little bit of uh, a little trap uh, that we are setting up with a feature uh, control. Uh, so I, of course, I immediately ran into it. So if I say this is feature one point one. Uh, I sometimes write the floating point number 1.1 instead of the string 1.1, and that creates some confusion. I think that that's mostly a tools issue. The tools should tell you that this doesn't didn't make a lot of sense. Um, but uh, I, I just wanted to mention it uh, in case other people run into the same problem. And the other observation is this um, dedent uh, thing that we. Uh, now there's interesting activity in the code EMG. The dedent thing uh, where um, the, the current definition of the control only dedents the right-hand side. And after using this feature in a number of uh, uh, data models, I find that I actually would prefer the, the default to be the other way around. So that that's those two are my two working group last call comments. If dent were to act um, in um, to dent both sides independently, is there does that when, where is the justification for it being a being a an operator with two arguments at all? 
Well, we only have operators with two arguments in uh, okay, yeah, uh, CDDL. So, uh, yeah, we we might want to think about adding different numbers of arguments uh, there, but th that's what we have at the moment. And uh, right now, it only dedents the right hand side, and it actually turns out that. Uh, in, in real life specifications, then you have to do more gymnastics than if it uh, dedented both sides. And you always can use combinations with empty strings to, to limit the extents. And if, if you only really want to dedent one uh, string, then you combine it with an empty string and use the result in a dot cat. And, and that's uh, in my, my little message from yesterday. But so so um and, and all applications we currently have for dedenting do require a concatenation anyway, right? Yes. Um, well, the, the the ABNF tag is is uh, uh, the ABNF control operator is uh, defined in such a way that this is almost inevitable. So you essentially always need, need the dedent uh, when you want to use ABNF. But the, the, the point is that I noticed that when you use ABNF, uh, you often combine um, ABNF from a specific RFC with boilerplate ABNF that comes out of RFC 5234. And that, that means you need to dedent both parts and it, it's, uh, yeah, less gymnastics if you can do this with one dot dead. So it's only a convenience thing. It's not, not making the thing really hard to use. It's just less yeah. convenient. Sounds plausible to me. Um, any comments on that? Um, then let's proceed with a brief touch on the on the file ma magic and uh, network addresses. So on the and I mixed those up in the comments. So let's start with the um, network addresses. Um, there is there is one that one issue that was discussed on the mailing list, um, not not even so recently, um, on the on whether we need something additional for um, for addresses that contain that, that include a net mask. Um, Michael, if I understood you correctly, it was a matter of yeah, if there are users, you can add it to the document, but um, whatever the working group wants. Um, have you heard anything back other than the outside of that thread that would that have influenced that? Michael, if you're saying something, you're muted. Yeah, um, so my, my understanding of this document is that um, the author is pretty happy with the, the general state so we could um, in, in the end we could we could state at some point we, basically there's the question of is there is there anything within the working group that would you would like to add or change to this because otherwise uh, we can send this on the way to being done that is asking for a round of reviews and going through a working group last call, which in a similar set, uh, in a similar setup than um, than CDDI control would need would need people to review it. Um, and turns out, um, except for the point that might we might come back later to, uh, file magic is, as I understand, in a very similar state, where if there is additional input from the working group now would be a good time, because otherwise. Um, we can we can let that proceed and 
and go through a round of reviews to send it out of the mail, out of the working group. Okay, um, that being said, and talked about, um, I'm still not seeing Emil on. So if it's all the same to you, Karsten, um, could you could we start with content format tags just in case um, Emil will show up later? Sure. Do you want to show the slides, or should I do that? If you could, could do that, um, I think that it, this would work better. I probably need the ball. I'm just about to hand it over. So where do where is the, ah right there. Every new version of WebEx makes sharing a screen slower. Hello. That's a feature, Karsten. It lets you get a cup of coffee while it shares your screen. Yeah, we probably should <laughs> schedule breaks in front of... Oh my god, this is slow. Oh, transfers of control, yes. <laughs> <sighs> supposed to get be able to use meet echo from now on i'm all in for that i'll vote for that one too and maybe for the the one in two weeks we'll try setting up the meet echo for it we can always have the WebEx as the backup if uh, we have problems. I think I asked mm -hmm. them, I suggested we do for Meet Echo is um, allow multiple people to share their screen with the chair picking who controls. Because that way you'd have the whole, did I pick it right? Do I know what I'm doing? Could all happen in the five minutes before the meeting. Really just just having meet echo as it is would already be an improvement. Yeah, so maybe somebody else should bring them because I'm momentarily um setting this up. How do you cancel this thing? Next. Just not doing the right thing for me either yet. It's like three slides. So. <laughs> One of the nice uh, things about Big Blue Button is that you actually appreciate your slide. Uh, so everybody has every slide at the time when they are shown. That's a nice idea. So should I see anything? Um, no, not yet, unfortunately. I don't. It doesn't doesn't work for me either right now. Yeah, sorry, I can't get them to run either. So my next best fallback would be to paste them into the minutes, to paste the link into the minutes and ask people to um, follow the link that I'm A, posting in the chat and B in the minutes.
Yeah, so we are looking at slide one, which is the title slide. So we can uh, just go to the, the next um, slide, to the second slide. And uh, so when, when we were discussing the, the file magic, uh, we noticed that uh, one uh, pretty useful, oh, thank you, Michael. Uh, we noticed that um, one rather useful thing would be to use the content format IDs that we already have allocated uh, for a 32-bit uh, tag for a media type. Um, so uh, COAP has these 16-bit IDs for media types that are likely to occur in, in uh, uh, COAP documents and uh, COAP interchanges. And those, of course, are also likely to occur in uh, CBOR data items. And you can always define new ones. So 16 bits is, is there are some 8,000 media types defined uh, in, in the IANA registry right now. So we, we have space. Uh, anyway, so the, the idea is to allocate a range, uh, a 16 bit range uh, of tag numbers. Uh, and this is 1,668,546,560 to the same thing plus uh, uh, 65,535. Um, and once we have allocated these things, then we can do things like uh, uh, tag something as uh, thing description plus JSON, which is a uh, um, media type that has content format number 432. So use, just using this tag number would identify um, this as uh, uh, thing description plus JSON. Or last slide, uh, in the second example, we use the uh, application um, JSON in deflate encoding uh, content format. So a content format not only has a media type, it also has a content, it can have a content encoding. And uh, JSON is, is often compressed. And uh, we have a content format uh, number allocated to, to deflate compressed uh, JSON. So that, that's all. There is <laughs> not much uh, more uh, context uh, here. Um, and uh, I'm wondering where, I mean, my main problem with this is that it's too small. Uh, for for a document to push through the ISG. Uh, so maybe we want to have this appended to some other uh, document. Since these are uh, first come first served uh, registrations, uh, we, we don't even have to have the document approved uh, to allocate these numbers. So if, if we uh, decide this is the, the right thing to do, uh, then uh, we should uh, just go ahead and register them and start using them. Um, and um, yeah, th th then it's not so important which document this finally is attached to as long as the draft is out there for, for that period. Any comments? Seems like a really good idea to me. Seems like you could append this to file magic if you wanted to. Yeah, that, that's uh, obviously that, that's making the obvious connection where you would you would use this uh, first. So I think that's the best place. I just wasn't sure whether this would slow down uh, file magic. But I don't think it will. If it turns out it does, we can still split it out again. Um, but it sounds like a good to, good idea to me. What I'm wondering from the from the B string that B strings that are um, that are in the corresponding CDDL. Um, the the CBO, the the tags from uh, from the self from the um, from the file magic document 
usually applied to the C kind of are packed around the the internals of the of the cedar or document that is they take and they take an any and if that but if that format happens to be defined as B string, but most CBO formats are not, um, then it's B string, but usually it's an any. Um, your examples all show B string, which kind of makes sense with deflate, but my naive expectation would have been that in this mapping, the kind of the, the internal um, the internal data structure would be tagged and not the serial disregarding any any um, any information that's also in the content format about whether it's deflate or or identity. So um, does this does this only apply to the encoded documents? And if so, how does it match to what we're doing in uh, in the in the file matching in the first place, which is about tagging the CBOR item itself rather than a CBOR encoding of a CBOR item? So yes, the intention is that this is uh, exactly for media type representations. So the, the the internal structure of that media type representation is not not actually available to the media type registration. So the, the only thing we know is that this is a byte string that using this media type, uh, we know how to interpret it. So byte string is, is really the only tag content uh, that uh, makes sense. But one, one might want to make an exception if it's uh, if it happens to be a text string like with JSON. If you go back to example one, uh, then of course the the question is why why is that uh, TD plus um, uh, JSON actually encoded as a byte string? Uh, but it is because uh, uh, representations in, in the uh, media types we have are usually byte strings. The, the few other uh, uh, um, cases, 7-bit and 8-bit, really don't make sense in 2021. Yeah. So it's al always a byte string. But then this all looks more to me like the Senem LCT and less like what we're doing with um, with file magic because file magic is about annotating the internal um, the internal CBOR structure, and that's not what we're describing here. Or phrased differently, that so someone could go along and register all those kind of do the same work again, um, but for the uh, but with the with a tag meaning the same thing, but for the decoded form, which would then be more aligned uh, with file magic, um, and of course only makes sense for any content format that is an a plus C is a plus C bore and not for all the others, and would be kind of indistinguishable between plus C bore with deflate encoding and plus C bore with identity encoding. Which of those is useful is the, and and which of those does fit with file magic? Yeah, in many cases uh, where we have a placebo. Uh, media type. We also already have a tag uh, for for the data item in there. So in in those cases, this would be duplicating. Um, in those cases, mm -hmm. extending the the this tag to to go into the internal structure would be duplicating existing functionality. Yeah, uh, I, I wasn't thinking that this mechanism was necessarily congruent with file magic in any particular way, but just it was a convenient document that's going to the progressed anyway. Mm -hmm. So if we put it in the same document, I think this needs careful pointing out that just because something just because something 
is a is of document is of former something something placebo applying the registered tag for this former and using or applying a tag registered along the lines of file magic for this format and applying the content format derived tag are two different things that have similar semantics but different different economies. Yeah, so I, I can take an action to to supply a pull request to Michael's document where the the text from from uh, the the current internet draft has been mangled to to do what you just said. Thank you. More comments on this topic? Approval, objections, notes on the weather. Okay, um, then let's please go on to the map electric data proposal. Um, Michael, could you um, could you um, sh share those two? Yeah, let me just figure okay. out what I'm trying to share. What do you want me to share? The the other okay. The other slide link is coming right up. Okay, I could have found it probably in the. Link on Robert's. It's in the chat now, Michael. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so we have this this long running discussion about uh, map like uh, data and tags for those in in CBO. And uh, next slide, we have a current proposal, uh, which essentially provides a number of knobs non-ordered versus ordered, uh, whether duplicate keys are uh, provided for, are allowed, and uh, whether keys or maybe even keys and values are homogeneous. And next slide, this leads to, to, this, uh, to these 12 tag allocations. Um, and um, this is pretty much stable, so what, what we maybe want to hone a little bit is uh, our discussion of how existing tags that address similar problems relate to what's in here. So th this is meant to replace the proposals to the, the um, tags that um, were proposed to be 279 and 280. And it's related, but not entirely replacing 259 and 275. So the L uh, is the LSBs here supposed to map to um, these two columns or something like that? Yes. Okay. So the, the text, I just reproduced the table here, but the text tells you what the relationship is. So the least thing tells you whether duplicate keys are allowed. The next bit tells you whether the there is ordering uh, implied, and the top two bits tell you about homogeneity of keys and values. So the the fact that there are related tags that that are not entirely subsumed by this. Uh, might be considered a diagnostic that this uh, proposal isn't really covering all bases. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 those tags are different uh, because they, they address certain differences in existing platforms and those differences are bizarre. So it's, it's not surprising <laughs> that uh, they don't exactly fit the, the ordered structure that, that we have come up with here. 
Okay, so from that point of view, I would say we are pretty much done. But then next slide, um, th there is a question coming up. What is the representation we actually use for the, the semantic groupings that, that were on the previous uh, slide? Um, so Seabor uh, has maps. Uh, which are essentially arrays w with a bit set, which says that uh, the the elements of the array actually are um, alternating keys and and values, and uh, the the representation that we are using here um, is essentially that representation, but with that bit not set because uh, with the bit set it would just become a normal Seabor map. So we're using an array with alternating key and value uh, uh, entries uh, or elements. Uh, and uh, so this, this is not the traditional A list that, that people who do Lisp may know, but this is a flattened uh, A list. Um, so that, that's what we have. And the question is, did, do we actually need to, to take on board any of the uh, slightly more efficient uh, representations that we have been talking about. So many maps that have uh, duplicate keys actually have massive uh, duplication. Um, so if you think about the way TLVs are often uh, used, uh, it's quite likely that the same TLV appears a lot before some, something else appears. And there is a more efficient way of representing that, uh, which is called mList uh, on this uh, slide. So you have one key, and then you have an array with, well, this probably shouldn't be a star, but it should be a plus. Uh, you have an array um, of uh, values. So when you use the same key twice, you get the opportunity to actually only transfer it once and have an array uh, with the values. Now that's great, uh, but of course it, uh, it costs uh, one uh, array head uh, per key value pair, one byte uh, per key value pair. Um, so next slide. Uh, now we can start trying to optimize uh, this. Um, so, um, yeah, um, we either can assume that we never have arrays as values, then we can use the OM list uh, form, or we can actually uh, do something special if V is an array, which is what the OEM list here does. So we have sequences of keys and then thingies that represents sets of values, and uh, this is either two or more values, in which case it's it's uh, um, uh, obvious that, that the values are uh, to be taken at face value, or uh, you have a, a value and that happens to be an array, then you put it into a single element array, and if uh, the value is not an array and you only have one of them, then you actually can put the whole thing right by the, the key. So it's as efficient as the, the original form uh, for uh, keys and uh, uh, values that, that are not duplicate and they are not uh, arrays. And then we have uh, various optimizations and pessimizations uh, for various uh, forms of, of uh, content. So this is uh, what uh, came out of the discussion uh, at the time when, when we were discussing whether we would uh, want to use this for Yang Sieber. Uh, we decided not to, to keep this simple, but next slide. Um, of course, the same kind of optimization also can be used for maps. Um, so the, the CBOR maps can also have this OM or OEM uh, kind of substructure. Um, so th these are all just representation uh, optimizations. The um, 
information model is mostly the same. Um, next slide. Um, the, the, the weird thing is if you do special handling for duplicate keys, then you have to say, what does it mean if you have a key that is being used twice, even though you could all put them into the same array. So in the example here, you have the key A and <clears throat> it's used with values one and two. And then there is a separate entry that says A is also used with three. And uh, you probably have to explicitly say that uh, this doesn't mean anything or this actually can be outlawed or uh, and so on. And then of course, ordering only makes sense with re with respect to keys in that uh, case. So this optimization comes with further strings that get attached to the information uh, model. Fortunately, not on the homogeneity side, but on, on the ordering and the duplicate uh, uh, side. So that, that's maybe the reason why we never got around to actually handling these representation uh, optimizations. And of course, one, one decision we could uh, make is, uh, yeah, we know that this can be done, but uh, this is outside the scope of the, the current map-like uh, data proposal. Or we could actually embrace uh, one or more of these representation uh, variants. And that's where where I think we still need to get a little bit of discussion and feedback before we uh, say this this document is uh, more or less done. I have a question on on how this might how how you expect this to be used. If you could go to the first slide, but it also relates to the very last. Um, uh, sorry, the third slide. Thank you. Um, there are a few. There, there are several several directions along the axis in which there might be um, an application might ex accept more. Is do, do we expect that a particular format will pick? one of these tag formats and decide that this is it? Or is this more like there will expect there to be a map like thing that is say at least or uh, that, that is at least ordered and ex accept that there might be might be variations. So for example that um, that a producer of content uh, would state that its values are homogeneous and the consumer, accepts both accepts homogeneous values but would also ex accept inhomogeneous values and that this is a, a direction in which the, the receiver can can accept several versions and the same question would then later go if we do ex embrace several of these encoding variations can we are there systems where we would expect that they just Except any of the, these encoding variations, or would every application again have to pick one of those and hope that hope for sake of code duplication that all applications run on a system uh, will will converge on one of the, or two of those? So the, the the answers to the two questions are very different. Um, this table really is about the information model. So only three of these are encoded in a different way than the other nine. Um, so from, from the point of view of, of encoding things, these are all the same and they tell you what the information model is. And it's rather unlikely that you define a protocol where at the same place uh, you have the choice between different information models. Um, so that, that does happen, but it's uh, um, not the usual way of, of doing things. So your protocol probably would uh, pick 136 and say, this is uh, uh, the, the tag that you are using. So that, that's about the information model side, which this slide is about. 
on the representation side, um, I think we we are not going to get rid of FA list because that's just the, the simplest way to do this. Um, so the, the question is essentially, do we take one or two of the other uh, variants on board? And similar to the way FA list can be used both for for maps, I mean, that, that's what, what Sibo says you do in maps, and can be used for arrays. Uh, we might want to to do that optimized form for maps and for arrays uh, again. But I think we don't want to open a whole gamut here, but but rather just say that there is one more optimized approach that you can use if it actually makes a difference uh, for your your application. And that would be a case where actually the same information model might allow two different tags uh, to select between two different representations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one <clears throat> problem, of course, is that it's hard to discuss this when the main use case we had in mind when we discussed this, uh, which was the, the Yang Sibo uh, use case, has decided to do this in a different way. Um, but uh, it's, it's very likely that, that other use cases will come up in, in actual protocol specifications. So I, I don't think it was a fluke that we came up with this in, in the Yang Sibo case. It's funny that you just mentioned this now that I wanted to ask which protocols would we have used this in if we had it already? Yeah, it, it really occurs a lot in protocols that um, are that started out as a TLV approach because TLVs are essentially ordered uh, maps. Um, and uh, it, it's not unlikely in a TLV environment to use the same TLV, uh, the same T for the TLV uh, over and over again. Yeah. Mm, Co-op co options are the, the, the example where we optimize a lot for that. Well, corp options also have data encoding, which is yet another optimization. Optimization. So uh, I didn't even discuss this very much on on the uh, slide. But of course, if you have ordering at the representation level, then you can put data encoding on top of uh, that, and that gives you an essentially non-ordered information model because you have to to sort uh, your your co-op options in order to be able to use the data uh, yeah. encoding. So you only have ordering within one option type. So the, the various path components, for instance, these are ordered but uh, between option types, you you uh, have a non-ordered situation because the ordering is uh, in the representation is uh, based on the number uh, allocation of the option number. So in, in this slide, this would be actually a third variation on being ordered, non-ordered, or ordered inside inside like values, which only makes sense for multi-maps. Right. Yeah, if, if we don't see a pressing need to address the optimized versions, of course, these can be added later. So we don't, don't have to do them now. And uh, we can just finish with the 12 tags we have uh, defined. Uh, right now and uh, complete the document and address the the optimizations uh, when we have the next use case that 
needs them. Which of course makes it slow to actually have that use case. I'll specifically ask that also not also again to the to to the other parties that were involved in in getting this case here. So maybe maybe they have a bit more feedback here. Okay, it seems to me that that is pretty much the conclusion. Yep. So thanks for bringing this here. More comments on this? Any other business you'd like to bring up in the in the about ten minutes we still have in the allocated time? In that case, I think it makes sense to just wrap up early. Um, thanks everyone for your input and for being here. We'll meet again. Same. Um, same time, but probably different station if we can get a meet echo um, test room. And with that, see you in two weeks. Thank see you. you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for taking notes. You're welcome. <laughs> bye bye.